Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, to many of you watching this video, Russia is a country of oil and gas, plus hard commodities like coal, iron ore, copper, nickel, etc. And nobody really thinks of Russia as an agricultural powerhouse, yet that's what it's become. In the last 20 years, Russia's gone from being a net importer of foodstuffs to a major export player in many of the world's agricultural markets. I mean, for example, Russia's the world's largest exporter of wheat and grains, and it's also a major exporter of oils of both rapeseed and sunflower, plus a wide range of other foodstuffs, including poultry, meat, fish, uh, etc. And it's positioned 17th in the ranking of the world's leading for the Food exporters. Furthermore, it's actually experienced the most significant growth inside the top 20 over the past decade, with exports increasing by 2.5 times. And that's not all. Russia's aiming to increase its export of food products further, and it's not just a simply a matter of supplying food to its allies. I mean, its agricultural companies are actively identifying new markets as a matter of business expansion and survival. I mean, the domestic market's saturated, and I mean, Russia entered the list of the largest uh, food exporters and it wants to continue to grow that. I mean, Russia's increased its market share of uh, food exports in the world to 2.1%, but it's also demonstrated the most significant growth amongst countries in the agricultural exports over the past 10 years, with a growth of 2.5 times. That's according to AgroExport, the Russian uh, organization. Now before I continue, I'd like to appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and my website and further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking you all in advance. Now in 2023, Russia's exports of agricultural products increased by 12% to reach 44.6 billion. That includes revenue from grain, which was up 18%, oil, fats and meat products, which is up by 25 and 23% respectively, with food and, and the food processing industry products up by about 6%. Although there was a slight decline in the fish and seafood exports and dairy products also saw a small decline. I mean, the notable increase in the exports of Russia's agricultural products actually began back in 2017, and it now shows an average growth rate of around 15% per annum. I mean, the main period of accelerated growth took place between 2020 and 2022, with an average increase of 17.5%, according to Olga Belenkaya, who's the head of macroeconomic analysis at FINAM. In 2019, Russia exported food worth $25.6 billion. By 2022, that was 41.6. Now, the growth in the sector can be directly attributed to the sanctions imposed on Russia in 2014 by the EU. I mean, once the sanctions were introduced on Russia, after Crimea voted to reunite with Russia, Russia just put a food embargo on the EU, and that was a shock to the EU, which didn't expect to be hit with retaliation by Russia. And the impact on the EU was severe. I mean... The EU farmers and their food producers lost the Russian market, which was worth over 20 billion euros a year to them. I mean, that meant there was no more French and Italian cheeses yet, no more Parmesan, no Brie, no Camembert. Yeah, it was a shock, but we adjusted. Plus, Russian cheesemakers now make some decent cheeses. This led to some serious benefits, though. I mean, as this further encourages the Russian government to support domestic producers to guarantee national food security. In view of the state's interest, benefits and support, new private investment began to flow into the industry, leading to emergence of new business opportunities for many people. Now, these measures really yielded very positive results in a short period of time with exports going, growing up from uh, significantly in 2017. That's only three years. Now, during the period of the pandemic and COVID and its recovery, exports have actually driven up a significant rise in demand and food prices. I mean, the industry's benefited significantly as import substitution because of the embargo that Russia did on the uh, EU there. So they've been able to work and develop and build the market. 
Plus, the decline in the ruble exchange rate since 2000 has a positive impact for Russian food exporters. I mean, plus the government's obviously provided huge levels of support to the agricultural sector through its state programme for the development of the agro-industrial complex and the next no export development project. I mean, in particular, in 2017, a preferential loan programme was done for the agricultural sector. I mean, this enabled agricultural producers to take out short-term or investment loans at low rates of 1-5% to for the development of crop and livestock production, as well as for the construction, reconstruction or modernisation of enterprises for the processing of agricultural raw materials and foodstuffs. Now, the challenging global geopolitical landscape, sanctions, favourable harvests and the swift adaption of domestic enterprises to the new, changing, evolving market conditions, plus the government support initiative, have contributed to a surge in food exports, says Dmitry Leonov, who is Deputy Chairman of the Russian Agricultural Producers Board. He believes that there's great potential for continued growth in Russian food exports. He says, domestic farmers and producers can increase their contribution to solving global food security issues, he says. Now, in the fiscal year, Russia's reorientated its agricultural exports towards countries which it has friendly relations within the SCO, uh, within the BRICS, and uh, etc. But it's, it now reaches 18 countries in Asia, Africa, Middle East, North America, and Latin America, now, offering domestic food products to new customers. Now, this year, it's going to expand to new, particularly in North Africa. For instance, food exports to China are going through a huge level of growth. I mean, unprecedented in recent times. I mean, 2023, it was up 44% in monetary terms and 36% in physical terms. I mean, China's the largest buyer of Russian food products. It buys 70% of Russian uh, rapeseed oil, while poultry and meat it buys about 40%. Additionally, it's a significant market for Russian beef, soya beans, oats and linseed. Also, China's become its primary purchaser of Russian honey and flaxseed oil. Funnily enough, flaxseed oil. That's according to the Russian customs. I mean, I mean, in terms of new markets, Russia was granted the right to supply 34 types of animal products to 41 foreign countries in 2022, with a further nine types of products to five countries added in 2023. Russian meat producers are looking for new markets, mainly because they've expanded so much that they can meet all the domestic demand and they need to export because they've got a list of uh, risk of overproduction and they'll start to drop in wholesale prices. I mean, export revenue means that they can uh, make money and that's one of the critical things. I mean, the pig farming sector, which has expanded hugely and it continues to grow, I mean, they need to sell about 600,000 tonnes of pork just to uh, keep standing still because of the... the now, that's, they're looking to China because China now allows pork exports from Russia and it's the largest buyer of pork and pork products in the world. Now, it's also worthwhile because they don't just buy pork, they buy the heads, the tails, the feet and all other bits of it. So it's not so much of a uh, there, and it's a great because it's only next door. Now, Russian dairy products are already exported to over 60 countries and 90% of those exports are CIS and Central Asia. Now, Russia has the ex uh, potential to expand to other regions. I mean, the Ministry of Agriculture is looking at how to increase exports, particularly dried powdered milk, which is for infant formula, which is very much in demand abroad, according to the Deputy Minister of Agriculture, Oksana Lu. She said that further measures are going to be implemented to ensure that uh, Russian milk, particularly powdered milk, is competitive and available in international markets. And she's looking to assist dairy farmers in its, these markets. And, um, stimulate the production of milk powder and subsidise their uh, logistics costs. Also, there's an opportunity for Russian dairy farmers to supply halal dairy products to countries in the Middle East and North Africa region. So, as you can see, Russia's a food exporter, it's self-sufficient, and it's also helped to feed Central Asia, bits of Asia, North Africa, etc. So, 
all things are equal, it's all going pretty well. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, please help me fund the channel and the website, seobrexit.com, by clicking the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Thank you, and I'll see you all again soon.